Thank you. Thank you, Harold. I believe you can hear me. Good morning, everybody. My name is Joseph Feynman. I am Chief Strategy Officer of Whitehead Security that was acquired by NTT and uh, changed the name to NTT Application Security just a few months ago. But thank you for coming to my presentation on, uh, on the application security timeline, where we'll speak of uh, application security wins, failures, promises, and predictions. Uh, we are celebrating 20th anniversary of uh, application security. And honestly, we had successes, good successes, but also many failures. The question is, are we really getting better over these 20 years? And I want to show you a piece of statistics that we're collecting continuously by testing thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of applications. The uh, summary I put it on the uh, very top is the summary is that we are infected with dangerous vulnerabilities. I mean, our applications are infected with dangerous vulnerabilities. Just a few pieces of information. For example, 32% of our application have information leakage, meaning that there are leaks of server directory, of SQL uh, query structure, of networks, meaning that our applications are open to attacks. Um, about 20% of our applications that we're testing, they are suffering from insufficient transport layer protection vulnerability, meaning that not all traffic is secure and it enables men in the middle attack and hackers can control, uh, have, take control over our sessions. Cross-site scripting, one of the most severe vulnerabilities, 18.3% of tested application have this vulnerability, meaning that malicious scripts could be injected, which enable hackers to take control of the web application. Content spoofing, 14.0%. And if we think, well, the list is long, but if you think that it is just one vulnerability per application, even this is not true. There are multiple severe vulnerabilities per site. For example, HTTP response splitting, there are 7.3 response splitting per site that we detect. SQL injection, another most severe vulnerability. Well, two and a half of SQL injection per site. Cross-site scripting, another most severe vulnerability. It's about two cross-site scripting per site. That's what we're seeing. But okay, we detected, we tested the application and detected these vulnerabilities. So the next step, why would it testing? Now DevOps supposed to fix those vulnerabilities. The problem is that remediation lasts really forever. Let me give you another piece of statistics. Um, time to fix by industry. Healthcare spends 337 days to fix on the average is vulnerabilities that we detected. Information industry, welcome to our industry, 336 days. Manufacturing, 310 days. Finance and insurance, a little less, 286 vulnerabilities. And transportation, 279 days. So I've shown you vulnerabilities. Here they are on the screen that they are very dangerous and they are infecting our vulner uh, our applications. I've shown there are multiple vulnerabilities per site. And I've shown another piece that it takes nine and more months for our industries to fix vulnerabilities that we in application security detected for them. Another piece of statistics that now you can see on the screen, let's take a look at severity of those vulnerabilities. We should expect that once you detected something really severe, cross-site scripting, they'll fix it right away. No way. On the average, it takes 200 days, seven months, if I'm not mistaken, pretty much, to fix most critical vulnerabilities. High severity, 265 days. Medium. 282 days, low severity vulnerabilities, 377 days. Scary, but it's not getting better. This is our summary of our testing from October 1st, 2020 through the year, through August 1st, 2021, 
we just ended this cycle a couple of months ago. It says that time to fix high severity vulnerabilities increased, not decreased, increased by 10 days on the average. We are not getting better. Well, let's say we're not so conclusive. Let us ask, are we getting better? That is important. So our application, and we've shown that, are infected with vulnerabilities. A bad picture, a scary picture. We detect vulnerabilities. Vendors in application security space, some contractor consultants, detect vulnerabilities when we test applications. But you understand that there are many applications that are not tested whatsoever. So how many vulnerabilities are not detected at all? This is a serious problem. But if and when, let's say, tested and detected vulnerabilities, it takes DevOps, our esteemed colleagues in DevOps, it takes many months, seven, nine, 12 months to fix those vulnerabilities. If they run their system infected with vulnerabilities, with detected infected vulnerabilities, and they are complaining that they are being attacked and hacked. So there is a clear disconnect besides any other issues. There is a clear disconnect between DevOps and SEC. Security, we, we poorly test application. By poorly, I mean that we don't test all application, whether it's our fault or not, it's a different story, but we are not testing all application. Moreover, we are not testing application at each and every phase and stage of software life cycle. But when it comes to a DevOps, they are very slow in remediating vulnerabilities that we detected. So the question is, what's the solution? And the touted solution is adopt DevSecOps. DevSecOps will resolve all those issues. <laughs> the problem is that DevOps has not yet become DevSecOps. There is a clear disconnect between AppSec and DevOps. And it will spend some time through the end of this presentation to figure out why DevOps has not yet become DevSecOps. So I believe that one of the reasons is that all this story about DevSecOps is wrapped in myth that preclude transformation of DevOps into DevSecOps. There are a few of them and I'll walk you through them. The myth number one is that DevSecOps is a cultural phenomenon, that DevSecOps is enabled by culture. This is absolutely not true. Realistically, DevSecOps is a technological phenomenon. It's enabled by technology. Culture always comes next. I'll give you a few examples before we get into security. The first one, our own culture. If we're asking what culture we live, I believe we can clearly say that we live in the culture of a social networking. We wake up in the morning and immediately we start texting and sending emails and using Twitter and all the social and professional communities. So we actually invented a special language and acronyms. We write novels in the small window of Twitter but take away the underlying technology, internet, iPhone, and immediately we'll scale back 100 years back where people used uh, pen and paper and spent about an hour a week maybe to write some letters. Same is true if we look somewhere closer. For example, we live kind of in the culture founded by object-oriented programming. Uh, we operate on daily basis with notions such as encapsulation and polymorphism and inheritance, but take away our programming language such as Java and Ruby and C Sharp, for example, more, and leave us only with the Fortran and COBOL. And uh, what's going to happen with our object oriented culture? Nothing, nil. Same is true about security. Technology comes first. You cannot have security culture of speed without technology. If we have just manual code reviews, it's impossible. You cannot have security culture of scale without technology if you use just manual penetration tests. They will not scale. And you cannot have culture of multiple secure daily releases without technology such as, and just use a few, you know, the acronym, Static Application Security Testing, SAST, 
Dynamic Application Security Desk, Software Composition Analysis, SCA. My point is that technology is the basis for the culture, not the other way around. We see organizations that build teams and try to instill culture without having technology. They believe that technology will come next. That is not true. DevSecOps is technological phenomenon and attempts to build culture first will fail. So now I believe we agree that technology for DevSecOps is absolutely mandatory. And with this understanding, we're bumping immediately into myth number two, where people say, well, any security technology can be used for DevSecOps and just throw all existing technology into DevOps and you will get DevSecOps. That is not true. The point I'm making that in reality, we need only specially designed technology, specially designed for DevSecOps, and only they will enable DevSecOps. Only they will transform DevOps into DevSecOps. Look at traditional technologies that some of them I've just mentioned. They don't cover entire software lifecycle. They aren't mostly around application deployment. They cannot be run by DevOps. They've been built not for DevOps. They've been built for very specialized, highly trained application security specialists. And they are too slow. It tests, it takes hours and hours and many days to test the application. It cannot feed DevOps cycle where every few minutes or every hour they have to deliver new version, new release of an application. And they don't enable CI, CD because they cannot teach each and every increment of code or build. The point is that DevSecOps cannot achieve its goal with the existing transitional technologies. Technologies are mandatory, but not all existing AppSec technology will transform DevOps into DevSecOps. Another myth that we're dealing with and this myth is that automation is equal DevSecOps. We heard it, all of us, so many times that automate technologies and you'll get DevSecOps. Of course, well, this is a typical example of a myth. The danger of a myth, it's not that it's all lie. The danger of every myth, it, it has a fraction of truth. And the truth is that only automation of the special design technology that I've just mentioned but not defined yet, all the automation of those special design technologies enables DevSecOps. First of all, with existing technologies, it's hard to automate and integrate into CI, CD, application security testing technology that are very slow. You cannot automate this very slow technology that take days to onboard and configure. It takes actually sometimes weeks and months to onboard and configure those technology. And all of them, most of them, let's put it this way, require special skills that only dev, that DevOps people don't have. And then these technology, as we already said, they're typically used mostly before pre-deployment of an application, when honestly it's too late already to test because you have to roll in production and there is no time to fix vulnerability. But uh, if you use AST only around pre-deployment, a little before after deployment, it doesn't make sense to invest your efforts and money into automation. It would be a very different story if you have technology that are given real in the hands of developers, of dev and ops people, of build engineers that will run it, each of them, dozen times of days, all together as a team, 100 times a day, and in that case, when they do it throughout the entire life cycle, programming, building, pre-deployment, and then an operation, then it makes sense to apply automation. Only then it is justified. So once again, only automation of special design technologies will enable DevSecOps. Next myth is shift to the left. That's another example of um, something that sounds like truth, but in, real, in reality is not. Realistically, DevSecOps is based on the shift to the left, to the right, and to the middle. This is so obvious. DevOps, bringing together DevOps, actually means that it should be applied across the entire life cycle. So your pro developers, your programmers, need application security on the left, your 
operation specialist needed on the right at mostly at after deployment at operation. And your CICD, your build engineer guys, they need to test each build, meaning they have to test in the middle. So the reality is that it's not shift to the left, it's shift to the left, to the right, and to the middle. Only in that case, you'll have security across the entire DevOps. On other way, it's DevSecOps. And I believe the, lost, the most laughable myth is that DevOps people welcome security. This is a really funny, this is totally unbelievable. The reality is that only that security will be welcomed, which doesn't distract DevOps from doing, of course, DevOps. Just think of it. DevOps goal is not even to deliver quality. It's to deliver functionality in time, in time and within budget limits. First of all, their primary goal is definitely not security. It's functionality first, probably qualities then, uh, most likely performance then, and distant, distant, priority four, five, whatever, it's security. And also keep in mind that those security technologies are complex and DevOps people don't have the skills. So they will welcome only that security technology which would not require them, would not require DevOps people to see security, to learn technology, and to run technology. It's already now we're coming closer to understanding what kind of AppSec we need, the one that DevOps doesn't learn, doesn't see, and doesn't run. So let us see what trends are impacting application security. And would also ask a question, is application security up to the challenge? These are the trends, I believe, that are impacting application security testing. DevOps, of course, main driver. Emergence of global DevOps communities. Cloud native DevOps and APIs. So what's happening? We see communities everywhere, GitHub, Postman, many others that bring together tens of millions of developers. They have end-to-end -end workspace with a unified experience from the beginning to the end that crosses entire, cover entire software life cycle, development and operations. In all features, programming, building, testing, running applications, they are integrated in the workspace. So DevOps person walks in and never leaves. And we need security that would stick to the same user experience. By the way, there is also infrastructure as the code, the programmable runtime and development environment, CICD pipelines that become a kind of de facto standard. And there is API, an API per Gartner now main driver. There is a 75% of all interaction conducted by APIs and only 25 hour manual access to the web. So these are trends that impacts us. And the upfront conclusion, AppSec as it is today, the traditional one must accommodate to these new challenges, but is it up to these challenges? Well, traditional AST does not fit the paradigm. It struggles, honestly. It does not cover cross-community workspace. It's not been built for that. There is no cross-software lifecycle coverage. And not all software lifecycle phases are covered. No single technology covers the entire, all phases of the software lifecycle. So you should try to use different technology that look and feel and behave very differently. Uh, AppSec testing offers incompatible tools that can require different skills. SaaS technologies are different from DES technologies. And within SaaS and DES, there are different vendors that offer different user experience. And that user experience of AppSec is different from user experience of DevOps. And most AppSec testing has been built for proprietary platforms. They are not community native or cloud native. Yeah, there are links now. They are linked, for example, into GitHub, but linking is not making them cloud native. And there is a very heavy human augmentation. One of the most serious issues that traditional AppSec is facing, there is an 
onboarding and operation that takes tremendous amount of time and really beyond DevOps skills and does not fit into DevOps and CICD paradigm. So AppSec testing is not for DevOps personnel. AppSec is built from AppSec professionals. And that's what stops security to be seamlessly integrated into DevOps, making it DevSecOps. So another issue on why traditional AppSec technologies fail, uh, let's take a look of API, how we're testing API. We know this is a, by far the major driver of all interaction on the web, those APIs. So to test them, DevOps people must find APIs. This is an approach which is error prone and abuse prone. And then they have to be declaring APIs in regulation compliant format, but the regulation continues to changing. Then they have to be uploading them for AST. So the result, it's an error prone and abuse prone approach. And it requires a lot of work on part of uh, DevOps people. Uh, let's take another just as an example, single page application, a very popular way to build application. Um, AppSec testing requires um, uh, application specific, non-universal extension to AppSec testing tools. They cannot capture typically Typically, they cannot capture server to browser interactions and they are heavily human driven. They require crawling, typically as a rule, not as an exception. As a result, there is a poor accuracy in testing SBA. There is a poor coverage, poor automation and a lot of work for DevSecOps. Um, SDLC coverage, it is also poor with the traditional tools because um, no AST technology covers all phases of software lifecycle. And it comes to incremental testing, which is very important nowadays. The incremental testing typically is associated with the physical increments. For example, well, we can test not entire IP range, but just sub range or not entire stack of uh, URLs, but just uh, one URL. But what is one URL? Is it one business function? 1.7, 3.2 function? Nobody knows. We need to test not physical increments, but business increments, and they are not good at that. And on top of it is length of boarding and configuration, which takes days and even weeks. So uh, a little harsh, but uh, I would say that application security testing, as we know it, is coming to an end. It requires different technologies, different solution. Uh, look at SAS test and I asked, for example, these are amazing technology, really amazing technologies. And most of them were built around 2000, 2007. So it's about 20, 15 years ago. And they served the purpose of the time. But at that time, there was no DevOps or DevSecOps notions, paradigms, no cloud native paradigms. There was no ubiquitous APIs, single page application microservices. So there is no surprise that they are not addressing these issues. Think of SEST, what a great technology, but it doesn't test a real application. It's just testing a static code. It's unrealistic test environment with no insight into running application. As a result, poor accuracy and high false positive rates. Let's take a look at DEST, another fundamental technology. It has that time consuming crawling, excessive attacks. Uh, crawling might take days, hours, and it has limited or no insight into application code and into APIs. Beautiful technology, I asked, really beautiful technology, but it's based on invasive instrumentation in the server. It's language, it's agent is language dependent. It consumes CPU of the same um, server that runs your application. And as a result, low adoption of this beautiful technology. So my point is that traditional AppSec technology struggle to fulfill modern requirements. They or this space reached its limits. So I try to summarize what we are having today. I try to uh, draw a building of traditional 
application security, and I believe the building is pretty ugly. That's what it is. Um, AppSec technologies and AppSec testing technology runs mostly late at pre-deployment, before pre-deployment. They don't cover entire software lifecycle. It's too late when in pre-deployment you test an application, it's too late to fix detected vulnerabilities. There is a poor incremental testing. They run seldom, not when needed, because they have to be run by AppSec specialists, not DevOps people. They are slow. It might take hours and days, not minutes or seconds, to test what you need, while DevOps is running really sometimes in seconds, but definitely in minutes and big builds, some hours. It's hard to automate. There is a poor CI/CD enablement, and they are not in DevOps hands. They have been built for security specialist. So a few predicts and directions where, how would we get our, at our situation, some recommendations. So I believe that through 2023, within a couple of years, DevOps community will grow bigger than in the previous 10 years combined. Thanks to ubiquitous adoption on GitHub, Postman, all other communities that bring together millions, actually tens of millions of developers. Um, adoption of cloud overall of infrastructure as the code, serverless computing, and et cetera, and et cetera. And to catch up with that, to follow DevOps, by that 2023, within a couple of years, AppSec and AST will start offering technologies that will really transform DevOps into DevSecOps. And those technologies, some of them should be built from scratch or very seriously modified. They should be purposely built for community, for cloud, and for native API testing. AppSec should have DevOps user experience, not the other way around. It's AppSec should learn speaking DevOps, not the other way around. They should become application architecture agnostic because they have to be able to equally easily test single page application and traditional multi-page application and microservices in API. And speaking of API, it should be no API discovery and API declaration and upload and compliance. It should not be DevOps job. It should be done not by DevOps, but these new emerging technologies. They should be fully automated, including very specifically application onboarding and tool configuration and credential handling, minimizing completely to the minimum, to the bare minimum, DevOps involvement. DevOps should not see, learn, and run actually these technologies. Test should be uh, test, uh, all those tests should uh, do business testing, um, the, the testing bus business increments not physical increments, as well as entire application. They should get insight into tested application behavior. Some technologies today run too slow and produce way too many false positive and negative simply because they have no insight in application behavior. Search for vulnerability should be navigated. Many technologies today don't know how to find vulnerability. That's why spending a tremendous amount of time and, for example, looking uh, launch excessive number of attacks. This technology should be a sharp shooting, not carpet bombing. And this technology should be built for deaf people, for QA people, for ops people, and as well as for security people. Finally, my recommendations we have to start adopting technology first and only then build technology-enabled culture. If you do otherwise, you will fail. We need to be adopting technology specifically built for DevSecOps and automate technology specifically built for DevSecOps. We have to make shift to the left, that is true, but also shift to the right and to the middle. By the way, shift to the right would require a very different technology that would run at operation phase where you cannot, for example, attack uh, application in such a way that you can bring them down or damage them or run web application firewalls. 
in no way you should be making DevOps experts in application security tools. Please understand me correctly. DevOps people should learn best programming, secure programming and operation practices, but in no way should become experts and no way should be running AppSec tools. And we always have to distinguish between myth and reality in DevSecOps. Thank you very much for your attention.